Hey guys, welcome back, and today I'm going to be going over my biggest steals of the 2023 NFL Draft. These are guys that were picked later than we expected, but I think could be immediate impact players wherever they end up going. So this is a list of about between 15 and 20 different players that I think were massive steals in the draft and where they were picked and why I think they were a steal. But first, be sure to hit that like button, subscribe if you are new, and leave a comment and let me know what you guys think or who you think was the biggest steal of the draft, who was your team's biggest steal. But without further ado, let's get into this. Starting off with Osiris Torrance to the Buffalo Bills, picked in the second round at pick 59. Just really good value here. He was the top guard on the board, was the second guard taken in this draft, and I really like this. For Buffalo, they needed to get Josh Allen some protection, and I have mocked Osiris Torrance to Buffalo. I don't know how many times in the first round, they get him in the second round towards the back end there, and then they really just got a dominant bulldozer in their offensive line. I love this pick for Buffalo. I think he is going to be a starter for them on that offensive line and be a really good player for a long time, and I think they got a steal here at 59. The next steal was at pick 45 where the Detroit Lions took Brian Branch. He could play that slot corner, nickel corner role for you, but he could be your long-term safety in case C.J. Gardner-Johnson doesn't come back. And I think they got him to play that nickel corner role because they got Kirby Joseph, who was great last year, and they got uh, C.J. Gardner-Johnson in free agency. But this is a really good football player. He can play anywhere in that secondary, and I think he could be a really good player. He was fantastic at Alabama. I had mocked him as high as the top 15 multiple times. He falls to 45. Best player on the board. I think you kind of got to take him. And I love this for the Detroit Lions. More help in that secondary, which is what they desperately need. And I love that for them at 45. Next, my Indianapolis Colts make an appearance here. First of two, and they get Aditomiwa Adabare at 110. I, I don't get this excited. If you guys watch any of the streams, the Anthony Richardson one didn't show a ton of excitement. The, I was super pumped for Josh Downs. I literally yelled when this happened. I was so happy. Aditomi was one of my favorite prospects. The Colts needed an edge rusher, and I had been begging for him to come off the board for about 100 picks at this point. And I had him mocked in the top 25. He falls to 110. Feels a huge need for the Colts. A guy who could play inside, outside, strong, fast. He has that Raz that we know that Chris Ballard loves. And I was so ecstatic that they got him. The Colts had a very good draft. I think he could be a starter day one alongside Quiddy Pay and be a huge piece. Obviously, they got Samson Ebukam, so I don't think he is going to start. But I think he could be a very nice piece for a long time. Next was Carl Brooks to the Green Bay Packers at pick 179. Really liked this for them. They get a tweener who could play inside, outside. Wasn't invited to the combine. Didn't have a great pro day either, so that's why he fell. But he is very productive at Bowling Green. I think he's going to be a nice piece for the Packers that play a favorable defense for him where he could play really anywhere on that defensive line and I think make an impact. I think he's a good player, fell further than I thought he was going to. If you get him at 179, I think it's really good value. Will Levis is a steal, was picked at 33. He should have gone in the top 10 and he falls to 33. And I know there's a lot of Levis haters out there. I hear them everywhere, but I think he's a good quarterback, and I'm a Colts fan saying this. I think the Titans got a really good player. He can move around in the pocket, something they don't have. He's got a good arm. He's he's had a good QBR when he had protection. The Titans have gotten some pieces in this draft that could protect them. I think he is going to end up starting over Malik Willis. I, I think he's your long-term quarterback. I think he's a very good player, and the Titans got themselves a quarterback. Next up is... Trenton Simpson to the Baltimore Ravens at 86. Now, wasn't I liked this pick a lot because I think you've got an athletic linebacker who can play, I think, that inside linebacker role, could play a pass rusher role as well. It'd be really good for you, but I think you get the best player and an athlete on the field here at 86. This is a team that is known. They build their defense, and they build the offense around that. They didn't really do that this year, excuse me, but at pick 86, you get a really good linebacker here. I think it makes sense. So I'm going to go with Trenton Simpson as a steal. <clears throat> Darnell Washington was tight end three on my board. He was like the fifth or sixth tight end that was taken. At 93 to the Pittsburgh Steelers, who you could put really any name on here. Uh, Joey Porter could be on here. I think he might be later on. We'll get to that later. But Darnell Washington can basically be a six offensive lineman on this team because their offensive line was not good anyways. 
you got protection on that offensive line. And oh, by the way, he can go out and catch passes now. They got Pat Fryermuth, I know, but Darnell Washington is a really good prospect. You get him at 93, it's too good to pass on. Dewan Jones at number 111 to the Cleveland Browns. This is a guy I had mocked to the Jets at number 13 at one point. This was insane value for him to be there at 111. And I don't really know. I know they have Jedrick Wills, and I know they have Jack Conklin. Conklin's got a bit of a cap hit. Dewan Jones can play that right tackle role. He's a little raw, but he can learn. I think he could be a really good right tackle. And the Browns crushed this draft. If you saw my grades, I gave the Browns an S. I love what they did. <clears throat> Dewan Jones was a big part of that. I think he was a massive steal. He's going to be a good tackle for them for a long time. At number 133, the Chicago Bears got Tyler Scott. He could have gone in the second or third round. I think this was a good range for him, but he went to a really good spot in Chicago. I think they kind of stole him for the rest of the league because they needed a speedy receiver to play in the slot there. And to get Tyler Scott, I think it's really good value. He's speedy, maybe a little bit undersized, but they got physical receivers. They have a Chase Claypool and a DJ Moore. I think he's going to play in the slot, and I think he could be a really good slot receiver for Chicago. So at 133, I really like the Tyler Scott pick. At number 79, my Indianapolis Colts get Josh Downs. This is a guy who I had mocked in the first round multiple times. And the Colts needed a guy like this, a guy with a, a lot of speed that could take the top off of defenses. And what did they do? They went and got Josh Downs, who was awesome at North Carolina. You saw him making plays all the time, and you get him here at 79 to pair with your new young quarterback in Anthony Richardson. The Colts had a killer draft, and I was so happy that we picked Josh Downs. Perfect receiver for our team. Next, we got Olusegun Oluwatimi out of the University of Michigan, who went pick 154 to the Seattle Seahawks. You gotta love it. They needed a center, and they got a really good one in Oluwatimi. In the fifth round, too, I thought they could have gone John Michael Schmitz, but they kind of played their cards, got other positions that they thought they needed more uh, over Zach Charbonnet, which I did not agree with. But really like this. End round five, I think there's a good value for him. I think he could start for you. I think they drafted two rookie offensive linemen last year that were very solid. I think Olawatimi could be the, in the next line of rookie offensive linemen to produce in Seattle. I mean, it's a first-round pick, but come on. At number 30, Nolan Smith to the Philadelphia Eagles. One, can you think of a more perfect landing spot? And two, it's a guy who I'd mocked at eight. I can't tell you how many times. The fall just kept happening, and I was curious where he was going to get picked up. And the Eagles get him. Insane value. This is a guy who, would had it not been for the injury, I think probably would have gone in the top 10. He's that good. You got a top 10 player at number 30. And in my opinion, you got a top 5 defensive player in the class at number 30. This is an insane value. And I know it's a first round pick, but it's still a steal because he just fell right into your laps. At number 57, we got John Michael Schmidt. I just talked about it with the Seattle Seahawks. They passed on him twice. He's the best center in this entire class, and the Giants needed some interior help. And to get John Michael Schmidt, I think, was really solid for them. He's a good center, can run, defend. He's good in pass protection as well. And you got to be able to protect Daniel Jones. you got to be able to open up run lanes for Saquon Barkley. And if the Giants are going to get back to the playoffs, they have to be able to protect Andrew Thomas and Evan Neal are your tackles, but the interior was weak. Now you got your center of the future in John Michael Schmidt. I really liked that for the Giants. For the Titans, again, they're back up here with Jalen Duncan. Before the combine, before the end of the season, Jalen Duncan was considered to be a first-round pick. Then there was some stuff that happened. His stock really dipped. And for you to get him at 186, this is a guy who could play probably your right tackle role at the next level and be very productive. He does have some flaws in his game as most prospects do, but in the sixth round, you get a starting quality tackle to protect your new quarterback. I think it makes a lot of sense there. At number 73, we have the New York Giants again, who went with Jalen Hyatt. I love this pick. Again, similar to Josh Downs, you needed a receiver that could take the top off of defenses. You got Paris Campbell, who I like. Darius Slayton's more of a possession guy. Uh, They made another move. I know you got... Uh, Wandale Robinson out there, but Jalen Hyatt provides a little bit more size than Wandale Robinson does, and I really like Hyatt. As a, as a Tennessee Vols fan, Hyatt was awesome. We'll see what his route tree is going to look like, but I love this for the New York Giants. Perfect for their team. Luke Whipler. The Browns went two offensive linemen, and they got them both. 
very surprised by Whipler's fall. I thought he was going to go in the third round. He went in the sixth at number 190. Really good value for them. You needed some interior help. Whipler provides that. I think it's great. Um, even if I know they have some help, they got a good offensive line already, but some of these guys are getting older. You're not going to be able to keep them around forever. Uh, I think Whipler's great value for the Cleveland Browns. At number 160, the Jacksonville Jaguars took Antonio Johnson. Their safety room was already weak. And Antonio Johnson's a really good player. So you get him at 160. I say really good. He's very solid. He can do a little bit of everything. But you get him at 160, a guy that was widely considered to be the number two safety in the class behind Brian Branch. Now, I didn't agree with that personally. But Jacksonville at number 160 go Antonio Johnson. I think this is a really good pick for them. The... New Orleans, or excuse me, the New York Jets took Zach Kuntz with the 220th pick in the draft. Absolutely love it. Their tight end room was a little weak. Um, I know they drafted Ruckert last year. They got Conklin and they got Uzama. I don't think any of them have the athletic ability as Zach Kuntz. We saw it at the combine. Zach Kuntz lit it up. I thought he was going to go in the third round. He falls to 220 to the New York Jets. Another weapon for Aaron Rodgers to throw the ball to. We've seen he likes tight ends. Robert Tunyon was a piece for him, or CDs Lewis. I think now you've got another middle of the field weapon for him that he can go to in Zach Kuntz. A.T. Perry. I was shocked that this guy just kept falling down boards. At 195, the New Orleans Saints took him. One, they needed a receiver. Do I think he's the right receiver for them? I don't know. I'm not really going to say. I think they could probably have used more of a speedy guy, but come on. A.T. Perry, the value's too good. At 195, I had him ahead of Jonathan Mingo on my personal board. I think A.T. Perry is going to be an absolute stud, and the Saints needed another pass catcher. And you get A.T. Perry from Wake Forest. Absolutely loved it for the Saints. And my final one here, Corey Trice, with the 241st pick, went to the Pittsburgh Steelers. How did he fall this far? I had mocked him in the third round to my Indianapolis Colts uh, in my final mock. And he falls to 241. The value's too good. This is a very physical, long arm corner who's got incredible size and a good tackler. For him to be on the board at 241 and you pair him with another steal and Joey Porter Jr., who you took at 32, you've just really made a very convincing secondary. So, really like this pick for Pittsburgh. And I think this is an awesome value pick for them. But guys, that's going to do it for my steals. Stay tuned. My reaches are coming just in a little bit, so stay tuned for that. Hit that like button. Subscribe if you are new. Ring that notification bell so you guys never miss out on video. I'll see you guys in the next one. Adios.